Welcome to my video on how to create a budget in Excel. I am so thrilled that you are here today. Now, I want this whole process to be easier on you, so I have already created a budget workbook. All you need to do is visit my blog, swimminginddebt.com, where you can access my free resource library. All you need to be is an email subscriber to access it. I have provided a link below to that page. Once you have downloaded the budget workbook, this is what you will see after it's opened. As a side note, you do not need Excel to work this file. You can also use Google Drive, which is a free online program. The only downside of doing that is that the cells are not protected, so formulas can be changed, which can mess up the whole workbook. I have provided a link to another video to show you how to upload an Excel file to Google Drive just in case you do not have Excel. Now back to the workbook. You will notice that I have provided instructions on using this workbook. And the first thing you need to do is have my income and expense PDF all filled out and ready to go, which is also called making a budget. So you can click right here if you don't have it. And the PDF looks like this. So what you're going to do, let me here and zoom in, is you're going to enter your income, your expenses, and your plan ahead. This will make it easier in entering amounts into the budget itself. Once you have the PDF ready to go, you will enter your income and expenses into the workbook. Your income will go right here and your expenses will go down this row. And just so you know, you can also change the names of these categories if they are not what you would like them to be. To give you an example of how this budget works, I'm going to enter in a budget. But I want you to know that this is not my actual budget. I'm just making up numbers, so it's an example. So here we go. I have entered in an example budget, and now I'm going to talk about a couple of things you will see in the workbook. I have told you that you can change the category name. So let's say that you want this one to say savings instead of emergency fund. So all you will do is type it in and hit enter. There are also some cells that you cannot write in, like this one for example. These are the protected cells to protect the formula. So if I try to write in it, you will get this notification. Another thing is these percentages right here. Now let's look at the housing percentage, which is right here. There are recommendations of what percentages you should spend in each category. So here is an example of what one of those looks like. This is from Dave Ramsey's. And if you look at the housing percentage right here, you will notice that it should be between 25 to 35% of your income. If you are inside that, great. But remember, these percentages are just recommendations that will help you stay on a better budget. If you happen to be over, maybe it's time to downsize on something or get rid of something. Really, it's just a recommendation to help you. Back to the budget workbook. If you scroll down to the bottom of the budget, you will see your total expenses right here. This is your expenses for the month. Off to the right, you will see left. This is the amount left at the end of the month. This can be a negative or a positive. You obviously want it to be a positive. The extra amount you have can be put towards whatever you are trying to accomplish. I would recommend tr using this to pay off debt. So let's do just that. What you would do is scroll up to the debt. In this case, it is a student loan right here. Then you would click on the budget amount. You would put an equal sign before the already budgeted and then a plus after. This is to make the cell add up the amount by itself. Then you would enter the extra amount. In our case it's four hundred and twenty seven dollars. Then you hit enter and now you have your new budgeted amount. If you scroll back down to the bottom, you will notice that your cash left has been adjusted also. 
The next sheet I'm going to talk about is the year tab. If you click on the year tab, you will see this. But if this is your first time opening this or the first time of the year, I want you to right click, click move or copy, click the year tab and check create a copy and click OK. This way, when you come into the workbook next year, you have a new copy. So you do not have to delete anything. Now you'll notice that you have a year two tab. So if you double click it, you can rename it to your current year. So let's make it 2016 and hit enter. Now let's look at the budget per month. Let's say we are in the month of October. Right here. And as you can see, it's hard to read all the way over here. So to make it easier, highlight all the months before, then right click and click hide. If you also notice, there is an unhide. So if you want to unhide something, you can the same way. If you click it, you have an easier view. I like to do my budget every week, but do what works best for you. This is how you would enter an expense. Let's do it with a student loan. First you select the category cell, and because I'm going to be entering multiple amounts, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be putting an equal sign, and then the amount that I paid. So audit, this one automatically has the $200 that comes out of it, and then I'll hit enter. Now, when I go to pay the extra amount that I have budgeted in, I will put a plus the four, 27 and then hit enter and it automatically budges it for you. If you just have one, say for savings, all you have to do is enter the number. Now at the top you will see your monthly take home pay which will automatically come over from your budget sheet and below that is extra pay or other. This is an extra amount that you make every month. Let's say you're on commission and you budgeted for less than what you actually made. This is where you would put that. If you scroll down to the bottom, this one is the amount of expenses remaining in your budget. This one is the amount that you have used. Right below that is money left each month. This is money that you can apply to debt or whatever you're trying to accomplish. If you did change any category names in the other sheet, for example, we changed savings, it will transfer over. If you do find this right here, instead of an amount, all you have to do is go up to the top of the column and double click it and it'll give you the amount. For me, I like to use credit cards to make purchases. There are a couple of things that I do use cash and those are normally food and my home projects. If you do not have control over using a credit card, do not use them. But if you do, here's how to budget them in every month. This is where you can name your card. So let's name this one a Visa. This is the amount on your card. Remember, only use credit cards for something you can pay for right then or it will not work. Now let's do an example. Let's say we put our electricity bill on our credit card. So you would come over here and budget for it in your budget. Hit enter. Then you would put it into your credit card. And below that is a bank. This is your bank account. So let's say we have 3500 in our bank account as an example. Then this is your expense cell. What you need to do every single month when you come into this is click it and then hit equals. Then scroll down to the bottom and in the month that you are currently in, click on the total remaining budget right here and hit enter. This will calculate your total remaining budget. In this tab right here is one that I like to do to have money left over in your bank account. I like to leave $450 to make sure I never have overdraft fees. So change this to whatever you would like. Maybe you want less, maybe you want more. This right here is your total amount you will have left in your bank account before the credit cards. Total right here is the total after paying your credit cards. And that is how to budget in credit cards. Now let's look at our last sheet on this workbook and it's called 
plan ahead. What you're going to do is when you come in here, you're going to, your beginning balance is your savings. So this whole plan ahead is actually a savings account. It's an easy way to keep track of your savings rather than having multiple savings accounts. So let's say that you know you're you have two hundred dollars at the beginning of the year in your regular savings, and then as you go through the year, you can fill this out with amounts that you put in. Now the tire one is the one that I really want to talk about because it's very important to plan ahead on this. In my budget, I didn't tell you about this, but in my budget, under the transportation, I have oil and repairs. This is where I plan ahead for that, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. And in this make a budget PDF, I actually have this right down here that's for car maintenance and tires. As you can see, this is something that I like to plan ahead for because sometimes it can be that expense that you're not planning on. I do car maintenance, I do tires, and I do car registration on this. So what you do is you'll get the amount that you need every month for the cost of these. And if we go back, I allotted for $75 for all all of those for my two cars for every month for the whole year. So let's say for the tire side of it in October, I'm just going to put $40 of that is for my tires. So if you look at this, this is how much you should have in your in your savings account, but $40 of that is actually for your tires. Now, if you do this for the whole year, let's say just as an example, we're doing this for the whole year. And you can see my regular savings, I only have $200, but $400 of my savings is for my tires. And this is the cool thing. I mean, you don't need tires every year, obviously, so you're kind of planning ahead for couples, uh, multiple years. So what you're going to do is, let's say last year, I started out the year with $200 already in my tire fund. So it's just a way for you to continue it on from year to year of using your savings account to plan ahead for things. That way when you look at your savings account, you're not just thinking, oh, I have $800. It actually breaks it down for you into the amounts that you actually have. And that way when your tires do need to re be replaced, you do have the funds for it. And that way you don't have to try to figure out where to get that money. It's easier to put $40 a month for me rather than the $500 that it would cost me to replace my tires. So the choice is up to you but it's an excellent idea to plan ahead for those little things. I mean, you can do Christmas in here, you can do birthdays in here. The possibilities are really endless. I have lots of categories for you to choose from, but that is what the plan ahead one is for. And that is my budget spreadsheet. I really hope that this will help you create a budget for your life and I hope that it can help you plan ahead from year to year. That way you don't have those little expenses that, that really throw you for a curveball. But I hope you enjoy this. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more videos on how to budget, become debt free, and personal finance.